Uh, <clears throat> we got we got a lot of a lot of good performances individually. Obviously, that turns out to be a great team win. What's up? What you doing up here? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, but um, you know, like I said, a lot of good individual performances that uh, uh, turned into a really good team performance. Um, you know, I, 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 first of all, I commended our, our guys. Uh, you know, it's it's tough, and yeah, I know it's tough for the officials. But uh, you know, there's two nights in a row that man, we we we've gotten outscored, or not even outscored, but in terms of attempts, we probably minus 30, if not more, you know, in, in the free throw situation versus two really good teams. And, and you know, we we got to keep fighting and, and trying to figure out what we're doing to where we're not getting to the free throw line, but our opponents are as much as they they are, um, because it's, 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 you know, it's hard to deal with, um, but our guys did a great job of just trying to go out there and play, keep their composure, and not allow uh, the discrepancy from the free throw line um, bother them. And so I commended them on that. Um, but the, the, the bottom line is, you know, these last two games, our, our guys were great defensively. Um, they They... It was a two-point ball game uh, in the second quarter, late in the second quarter, and we got three stops to finish that 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 first half or the second quarter. And then the start of the third, we got f I think five stops in a row to start the third, and that's eight stops in a row. And as dangerous as we are in terms of scoring the basketball, if we get, you know. If we have situations where we're getting eight stops in a row throughout the course of a ball game versus any team, there's a chance we could blow that thing open. And, and it goes from a two-point ball game to a ten-point ball game because of the eight stops in a row. Uh, from a two-point to a ten-point lead because of the eight, eight stops in a row. Um, I, I mean, Keegan, phenomenal. Two charges. We haven't had somebody take two charges in a game in a long time. He just – Stuck, sticks his body out there and gets ran over. Uh, uh, Keon, eight deflections. I mean, he not only that, he's 6-0 as a starter. You know, he's done a heck of a job for a guy that's been in the, that, that, that was a two-way guy up until at the halfway point this year. Uh, to get eight deflections in a game, you know, where you play 28 minutes, even if you played 48 minutes, that, that's that's an amazing thing to do. Uh, just 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 a just a heck of a job by 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 Keon to get the eight deflections. On top of that, uh, three steals. Um, Chris Dorte, he came off the bench and gave us a lift on both ends of the floor. Uh, you know, they're a fast break team. They ended up with six fast break points. Um, they had 16 points in the paint in the second half. And um, you know, one of the things that we that we told our guys before the game is, if we can try to keep them under 50, we're going to have a chance. And there was a stretch where it wasn't looking good. I think in the first quarter or something like that, they might have had 16. And next thing you know, they're up to 30. And but we ended up doing a better job towards the end of the second. And so, uh, for bless you. So for us to be able to protect the paint and then still try try, try to get out the shooters was was pretty good, but um, uh, again, offensively, we tried to play with pace. We had 16 fast break points, which was great. We keep telling our guys to go to the offensive glass. We only had nine offensive rebounds, but turned into 16 second chance points. So we're finding ways to score without even running any offense. When you're talking about 16 fast break points, 16 second chance points, especially if you're only getting to the free throw line 12 times. Um, but Man, what a game by HB. Uh, HB hit big shot after big shot after big shot. Uh, Keegan, 19 points, 11 rebounds, huge double-double from him. Uh, obviously, uh, Domas, I mean, it's, it's just the norm for him to get a triple-double. For sure, it's the norm for him to get a double-double, but heck of a game. 
by him versus a very, very physical team. I mean, he, he was getting hit, bumped, and all that stuff, and he just stayed in there and had 19 rebounds, 10 assists, and, and 17 points. Uh, but, it, it, again, I thought it was uh, our bench that was great for us because, you know, we had a starter out, obviously, which moved Keon to the lineup, and we had a rotational guy out. And, and again, I talked about Dorte. Uh, obviously, Malik is as dangerous as he is. Uh, but the guy that uh, I want to mention last is Davion. You know, we, 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 we talk about, again, prior to last night, uh, our lack of sprays getting off the ball and how we only had – we're averaging about 11 a game. Last night we had a bunch. Tonight we ended up with uh, 19 sprays. We were 11 for 19 in, in sprays. And I keep saying it, if, if we touch the paint, we get off it like that, I mean, with the way we shoot, that that's a horse shot, and we were 11 for 19. I don't, I'm, you know, I don't know what that is, but I know that's over 50 percent. You're shooting over 50 percent from the three-point line on 19 attempts. You got a good chance to win if you can sit down and guard somebody for a little bit. And 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 Davion was fantastic. Every time he touched that paint, man, the defense collapsed, and he put that thing on time, on target. It was just beautiful, fun basketball to watch. Just a, just a whale of a game from 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 Davion uh, on both ends of the floor, but but predominantly with the way that he sprayed the ball. HB was a beneficiary of a couple of those things when the, when the game was tight in the fourth. Mike, you talked about this. A little bit last night, also a little bit pregame, so I apologize in advance. No, but the possibility of Keon working his way into a permanent starting role, what goes into a significant decision like that? Is it longevity or, or consistency of doing it over a stretch of time? Is it something specific you're looking for from Keon or any player? Just what is the thought process that goes into making a significant move like that? Uh, I mean, there, there's a lot that goes into it. It, it comes down to feel, um, you, you know, Kevin uh, gives us a lot too, and you know, does it make us better with Kevin or Keegan or HB uh, coming off the bench just to start Keon? I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't have that feel yet. You know, you can always bring Keon in the game early. You, Keon can still average 20, 25 minutes a game if need be, and so um, kind of like Malik, just get you know. It can give us the luxury of, A, obviously finishing the way we want to finish, but playing different lineups based on the flow of the game because we might go out there and the flow of the game might be in our favor with whoever's starting. Okay, let's ride with that. Okay, they want to make a run or they want to do this. You know you got Malik, you got Keon, you got Davion coming off the bench, and it just adds to what uh, is already a very, very good bench. Mike, you talk about, you know, this season, you know, moments of let up where, you know, teams will go on runs and maybe that gets a little bit out of control. Um, over these last two games, are you seeing maybe a, I don't know if it's a corner being turned, but anything different from your group as they kind of maintain and hold that off? I, I tell you, the, the focus is really there on the defense end of the floor, you, you know, um, in order to. Um, s sustain runs or stop runs, you, you got to be able to defend because if a team goes on a run, which a lot of teams do, to think that you're going to go on a better run than them by outscoring them it isn't really realistic because usually when a team starts to go on a run, they get a little confident, they get a little energized, and their defensive intensity picks up. And it's just natural. Everybody's human. Your, your anxiety, if you're, you're playing against a team going on a run, kind of goes up. And so that, that same shot that you were taking when you were up 20 or up 15 isn't quite the same because you're feeling the pressure of them coming. So uh, the one thing you could do is turn that anxiety into some sort of defensive energy or sense of urgency. And the reality of it is that's what our guys did time after time. They got stops, and those stops turned into easy baskets the other way for us. And that's something that, you know, hearing the chatter from our guys on the bench is something that I know that I, I really like because at the end of the day, uh, these guys spray the ball, they space the floor, they play fast like we're capable of, like we've been doing since day one. We'll score, but are we going to be physical enough and be able to sustain or stop some of these teams' runs that they go on when we're up? 
Coach, you mentioned Malik's name a couple of times. Obviously, he went out. He did come back, finished with like 26 minutes. Uh, can you tell us exactly what happened, what his status is, and if you expect him to miss any time? Uh, I, I'm not sure what I know he got knocked to the ground. Uh, somebody said he, it was like a stinger. So he could have he could have gone back in the game in the first half. Um, but he, he had three fouls. And I felt we were in a pretty good rhythm to close the half. And so I, I didn't want to risk him picking up his fourth. And I just said, we'll hold him, give, give, give him a chance to get his wits back. And, and then, you know, we'll go back to the regular rotation in the second half. And, uh, uh, but I, I, I mean, I don't know. Have you heard any update? Yeah. I, I think he's fine. Yeah. I mean, he, he, you know, afterwards he was, he was yelling. He was yelling that we were ten and two when we don't have a shoot around. So I think, I think, I think he's fine. He was like the head coach. I hope the head coach hears it. And I was standing right next to him. So he's back to the old Malik. Coach, uh, the other day you complimented Keegan's ability to get rebounds in traffic, or yeah. you know, how he's getting better there. Where do you see it? Is it mindset? Is it something with the technique? It's all of that, and and then just his growth in terms of his, his not just maturation uh, mentally, but but especially physically. You know, before when he was in there, and, and and you know you're holding guys off, and you're getting held off. When that ball hits the rim, now you got to be able to go up through some contact. And with his strength and his size, he's starting to be able to go up through some contact. He had a couple of big rebounds in traffic, but and, and to go up at at a point and grab that thing, and and, and again, it's only going to get better because he's got a great nose for the ball, um, and and he's just you know starting to learn the officials, learn the opponents, and, and learn ways that he could take advantage of his size, strength, height, athleticism when it comes to rebounding the basketball. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys.